everyone, this is Dr. Salceda, your conscious gynecologist. Today we're going to be talking about vitamin A and its relationship to treating a lot of the symptoms that are related to endometriosis. Now, I'm really excited about this video because this is one of the factors that I have been noticing in my practice. That I've been getting a lot of improvements with women who have endometriosis symptoms. Now, Vitamin A comes in a lot of different forms and we're going to be talking about what those forms are. But can you believe that it actually could be from liver, from animal livers, from cod liver oil, and even of course supplementation. But it doesn't sound great, I know, but just stick with me. We're going to go ahead and dive into this a little bit further so that we can talk about how nutrition, particularly vitamin A, can help endometriosis and all of the discomforts that are related. So go ahead, hit the subscribe, hit the like button, go ahead and share with a friend, and we'll get to it here at Conscious Gynecology. So vitamin A, could this be the magic bullet? Could this actually be what many women really need in terms of treatment? Well, you know, as you know, there are so many different medications and therapies that do help endometriosis. And when I look at a lot of this information and I'm reading a lot of the scientific literature related, I try to think about how did our ancestors eat? And why is it that endometriosis is becoming such a problem and more prevalent now as the years are going by? And you know, even though we did have case reports of women experiencing endometriosis as early as the 1850s, I would argue that since then we are seeing more and more endometriosis and all of the related problems because maybe now just maybe we've damaged our gut microbiome way more than what we've been doing in the past. And so by now, if you've been following these videos, you'll understand that endometriosis is a gut microbiome problem. So how do we heal the gut? Well, I think vitamin A might be an answer. Now, first of all though, the way that we heal the gut is by avoiding things that will damage the gut and by supplying prebiotic precursors to our intestinal microbiome to help all of the immune mediators that we need to prevent leaky gut, which is when we get a lot of that inflammation that leaks from our intestines into the region near our gynecologic organs. Now, if we think about the role of the gut microbiota in nutrition and health, a healthy gut comes from a low sugar diet, healthy fat consumption, and protein consumption as well. And that triad of low sugar, healthy fat, and higher protein consumption will decrease gut inflammation, it will improve lipid metabolism, it will increase antioxidant production, it will increase short chain fatty acids, which are really protective barriers for our intestines, and it will, because we'll have such a good barrier within our intestines, will decrease the risk of infections and increase insulin sensitivity. Now, a diseased gut, a diseased gut microbiota is, is, comes from excessive sugar and processed food. That's it. And so, of course, there's all a lot of other um, more nuanced things that, you know, we do see that folks that struggle with mental health or smoking or more other levels of inflammation have diseased guts as well. However, when we're looking at nutrition, diets that are excessive in carbohydrates as well as processed food and even seed oils like vegetable oils really do slay the gut microbiome. And because of that, it leaves the gut um, to have a lot more gut inflammation. That increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. It increases the, uh, the production of lipopolysaccharides, which are proteins within certain gram-negative bacteria that cause huge inflammatory cascades to our immune system. Um, it decreases short-chain fatty acids, and short-chain fatty acids are, again, protective 
um, molecules that help with the barrier of our intestines. And because those gap jun junctions, those connections between our um, intestinal lumen are compromised, we have an increased risk of infections that um, really you will worsen our intestinal health, our also our gynecologic health, and it'll increase the risk of insulin resistance. And so when we're looking at that, the difference between a healthy gut and a less healthy gut has to do with those comparisons. Now, a really important thing to think about is the whole idea of bacterial translocation. Now, decreased short chain fatty acids, which are vitamin A precursors, okay? Vitamin A is an important immune mediator. And vitamin A is a precursor to what our intestinal bacteria need to produce something called butyrate. Now butyrate is a huge immune modulator that helps decrease our inflammatory response and it helps our T cells and our um, immune cells um, do their job at the appropriate time and it has them not be so active um, and it has a lot of improvements in preventing a lot of the um, uh, war-like response that a lot of times our intestines can have if we're eating too much of the wrong thing and that chronic inflammation, that chronic war that our immune system is under, we really cause a lot of self-inflicted damage to our body because our immune system is constantly on alert and processing and all of those macrophages and T cells are active and trying to remove a lot of the inflammatory cascade that's related to a leakage of inflammation and toxins into our circulation as well as our abdomen. So all of those things have to do with the diseased gut. Now, the addition of certain nutritional factors have, has been shown to reduce a lot of immunologic problems and the literature is very full of this information. One really great paper that I'm going to put into the show notes today is got written by a, um, a person named Dr. Anderson in 2019 that looked at a lot of the precursors of the intestinal microbiome and how it improves endometriosis symptoms. Now, one of the big things that he talks about is vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acid, and vitamin A. Now, if you think about it, the, these are components that were readily available um, and part of our diet of, of our ancestors. Now, back you know, you know, hundreds, thousands of years ago when we were cavemen, when we were living by the oceans, when we were living by streams, there was a plenty of fishes that we, um, that we ate and consumed. And those fishes, as well as other animal proteins, um, were high in omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, and vitamin A. Now, those precursors were all used to help protect our intestinal microbiome and have food for the microbiome to help protect us even further. You know, our ancestors back in the day, you know, ate nose to tail. They ate, you know, organ meats, which are full of vitamin A. Um, small fish sardines, anchovies are full of vitamin A, omegas, and vitamin D. And so these organs, these animal products might not always be readily available or something that we really desire to eat. They're, they don't always taste that great. And so it, adding them into our diet can be kind of complicated. And so um, modern diets don't really so much help us with improving our health as we know. And so supplementation can oftentimes be helpful with adding the precursors that what, what our um, ancestors used to eat. Cod liver oil seems to be a really great um, uh, supplement that includes omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D and vitamin A, which are all important immune modulators. And in my personal practice, but with all of the literature out there, has definitely improved a lot of the symptoms with um, relation to endometriosis. And now we understand why. It's because all of those medic all of those supplements really do help heal the gut microbiome, which really is, in my understanding of the literature and what is the all of the new literature that's coming out to be the 
big initiator of endometriosis. So that's it. I hope that you found this video helpful. To me, I think there are so many things to learn about how nutrition impacts our gynecologic health. And you know, definitely talk to your doctor about what makes sense for you. Cod liver oil seems to be a fantastic supplement for a lot of people um, who are experiencing gut microbiome disturbances. And um, you know, I think it's readily available. It seems to be very safe, but check with your doctor in terms of whether this, uh, this supplement might be right for you. Well, I hope that you found this video helpful and go ahead and share, like, or subscribe to the, my channel and share. Have a great day.